Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Earth or Org Talks, an online conversation with Edwin Kay. My name is Olivia Lai, the managing editor at Earth.org. I will be your host for tonight's event, which is brought to you by the Hive Coworking Spaces, a place where passionate and entrepreneurial people can get together, share ideas, and grow their businesses. The Hive has location in Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, Australia, Singapore, and Taiwan. So tonight we're talking about the uh, talking about fashion and the textile industries, the possible environmental impacts, and all about sustainable solutions. Uh, for the sector as well, which is why we invited our speaker today. Edwin is the CEO of the Hong Kong Research Institute of Textiles and Apparel, uh, which we're going to call HK Rita for now, um, which is an organization dedicated to the research, development, and technology transfer within the fashion sector. So Edwin has an extensive experience working with the supply chain operations as well as holding multiple IP, which has won several uh, international invention awards. Some ongoing projects that HK Reader has been currently involved with includes a partnership with the H&M Foundation, uh, which has been turning old garments to brand new clothing, um, which is something we'll be talking a bit more in detail later. So before we start, um, we can, uh, we'll be doing our interview and if anyone who joins in later have any questions, they can just pop it in the chat box as you're on Zoom here. So welcome Edwin and thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for uh, for, for including me in your conversation. Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we are talking about the fashion and textile industries and the possible um, environmental and social implications. Uh, so before we go into the dive deeper into the topic, let's kind of talk about, learn a bit more about you. Um, can you tell us a bit about your background and how did you actually end up here in the world of sustainable uh, manufacturing and sourcing and research and development? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, my career development could be a cautionary tale to anybody young coming in. Is this is not what you should do with your career? I, I, uh, I, I got very fascinated as as a as, as a. So I'm from Hong Kong. I grew up in Hong Kong, uh, and and I was very fascinated by the 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 development of of, of urbanization and the changes to society. Uh, um, and I always thought I was going to be a, a, a some sort of a social. Uh, Social scientists, but the the um, the frustration and the inability to bring resources to people in need um, uh, made me realize I'm very ignorant of how supply chains and operations operate uh, um, function and how we can make them better. So so I I uh, went to to graduate school to to study that and in the process started working in the apparel industry. To, to finance my my uh, my education and got fascinated by by the uh, um, the supply chain that this industry operates in and then and then I got to a point in, in my career in which I just um, realized that there's a lot of inefficiencies and a lot of opportunities to not only do do good but to also make a difference uh, in in our supply chain operations and so I I, I decided uh, to change careers. I just basically stepped off um, a, a corporate uh, um, career and, and got very interested in research. And I started doing research. And in the process of doing that, I was approached by the government to see if I would be interested in running a uh, applied research center uh, that not only is doing a lot of thinking about this, but actually is trying to push uh, some of these solutions out into the marketplace. And, and that was 10 years ago, sort of a, a left turn in my career. Amazing. This is uh, it's a long road to get here. Um, so to the people who are not really uh, familiar, familiar with this, um, can you tell us a bit more about HK Reader? What exactly does the Institute does and the work that you're mostly involved with? Yeah, HK Reader is, is a applied research center and, and um, it, it, it is funded and operates under the Innovation and Technology Fund. Uh, which is a pool of money set aside by the Hong Kong government for, for applied research. And this is the area that, that they identified between um, what the theoretical research, uh, the, the basic research that happens in universities and the commercial research that we see in the marketplace. They, they, they identified uh, in, in, the, in the early 2000s that there, there was all these great ideas that never reached market because there's this gap in there. And so we're one of five applied research centers under the Innovation and Technology Fund. And, and our goal is to, is to move things into the marketplace 
Uh, and so we usually work on things that are about three to five years to market. And we work on um, materials, we work on machineries, we work, work on enterprise solutions, and we work on sort of large supply chain solutions. Um, and in the process of identifying where the opportunities are and where the gaps are, we did a large survey of, of stakeholders in our industry, and we very clearly came back with three uh, um, topics, which are three domains, which everybody seemed to be interested in, uh, it, regardless of where you are in the supply chain. And the first one, uh, number one, was sustainability. Everybody, either their customers or, or, or their uh, upstream or downstream suppliers are all um, very passionate and curious about what's going on there, how can they be better? And then there's industry 4.0. Uh, the, we have a lot of automation and, and uh, intelligence uh, that we can incorporate into, into our, the way we, we make and manage our supply chains. And then finally, uh, there, was a very in, uh, there was a very interesting um, comment uh, that, that everybody made, which basically said the same thing, which is that there's a lot of opportunities for what we do, what we make, basically how we use soft materials to have application beyond fashion and apparel. You know, we, we, we can make people's lives better by, by, by adopting some of these for, for, for medical application, for, for social application, uh, for, uh, for, for all sorts of functional applications. And how do we, how do we take what we, we, we do and make and, and do something good with it? So, so these three domains became the, the, uh, the areas that we spend all of our time uh, working on and doing research around. Absolutely. And today, obviously, we really want to focus on the sustainability um, pillar of the, your operations. Um, so this clearly there is a mission to solve um, or to tackle sustainability issues in the fashion industry. So I think it's important we kind of discuss a little bit more exactly what exactly is the state of the fashion industry? What are the certain environmental implications? And what? And I think there's increasingly a, a better awareness on the concept of fast fashion and what it actually means. Right, right, right. I, I, I think that, um, so here we go back to the, 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 the supply chain that we're in right now. Uh, and and um, what we have done as an industry in the last 50 years is we have, uh, optimized and perfected this, this glo very long globalized supply chain to do one thing very well, uh, and that is to make things in the East and consume things in the West. And, and, the, and it has worked and it's served us very well. But the problem is that this is uh, now the world's longest linear supply chain. Without a, uh, uh, any, any uh, design intent about what happens post-consumer, and, and then what happened is that as our consumption grew, especially as, as fashion cycles accelerated, uh, the, the volumes became higher and higher. And, and we got to a, a point in which this, this type of consumption is no longer sustainable because we don't have an exit strategy. Um, and and the, 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 the materials that we want to recycle uh, at the end of this long linear supply chain sits in, in these consuming economies where, uh, where, the, where there are no processing capabilities left anymore. They're all in the, in the manufacturing economies. So there's a huge logistics problem uh, to, to th that we have to deal with as, a, as, a, as an industry. And then there is a design intent uh, issue, yeah. uh, which is that we need to be thinking about what is the second use, what is the longevity, and what is the disposal uh, pathways uh, for the things that we make and things that we throw into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And then especially here in Hong Kong, where we're speaking to each other, there is a huge you know, consumer uh, culture here. And I'm un understanding what is the current state of the, the fashion industry here in Hong Kong? How is the supply chain and the, the rate of consumerism that is taking place right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, certainly a lot of things are happening in Hong Kong in real time. And for sure, the last uh, last uh, two three years of the pandemic is causing some real time changes and shifts in in consumption uh, attitudes and, and consumer behavior. But it would be true to say that that um, one we are, we are um, mostly a service economy, so we don't have any processing capabilities left. Two, 
we have no exit strategy. China doesn't want to want us to export the the, the garbage that we produce, uh, and so our only um, exit strategy right now is landfills, and those are uh, landfills are, are are filling up. Hong Kong, uh, according to the to the environmental uh, de department, we produce somewhere uh, slightly more than three hundred uh, tons of uh, fabric and, and apparel waste every day. So we, and all that, because we don't incinerate for, for, uh, for energy at this point in time, all that, uh, um, be, most of that becomes landfill material. Yeah, and how did we actually get to this point of the supply chain, such mass production? How did we consume so much? Is it from uh, the responsibility of producers or is it actually, you know, from a responsible from consumers as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think this is a, uh, it, it's a great question. And I wish there was one villain that we can point to as that guy, right? But I, I think at, at, at every level, there are, there are contributing factors to this. Um, the first of all, I, I think what happened in, in, in the fashion industry were a couple of big seismic changes that we, we, didn't respond to as quickly as we could. One, um, the early ones would be that that um, in the in certainly around the 1990s, um, the financial markets really be, made it very clear that they are going to reward growth companies. They will the, the capex. Uh, uh, I mean the the the, the market cap of, of growth companies are are always rewarded. Uh, and if you can demonstrate growth year on year or see uh, quarter on quarter, uh, you get these great uh, multiples and uh, great PEs. And so everybody wanted to grow. And, and so in the fashion industry, there, there, are, there are two ways to grow. You, you can grow the number of marketplaces that you're in. So you see this uh, proliferation of globalized brands uh, as they explore new marketplaces. And you, you grow by selling the, the, the number of units that, that you that you uh, uh, put in the hands of, of consumers. Well, how do you sell more units to, to consumers? Well, one of the ways is to accelerate the, the fashion cycles. Fashion cycle at, at the turn of the the, the uh, 100 years ago is a two season event, right? It's it's yeah. summer, I need some, some clothes because it's hot and winter, I'm cold, give me some heavier clothes. And now that has become, uh, now we measure that in weeks. Right, and 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 there are uh, newer companies uh, coming, like like Shein is a, is an example that everybody uses that measures these cycles in days. Mm -hmm. So so accelerating the cycle creates this demand uh, or creates this need for consumers to consume more. Um, it, it, but that is driven by by certainly pressure from from the the way we do our accounting and how we evaluate. Uh, the, the companies, so so the the, the financial markets uh, uh, push this out. the The explosion of the of the social media and 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 the uh, and the online community also created this this uh, um, proliferation of of knowledge and information uh, all uh, across uh, different societies. We can basically find. Uh, information on everything that, that we want to find information on. And as a result of which, we see the, these fashion cycles and trends accelerating because it's all happening real time. Sure. So, so we, we, we have these changes in markets. We, we have these changes in technology. We have these changes in, in, the, in the way we measure what, what, what success looks like, uh, what successful companies look like. And all that contributed to, to uh, what is happening in, in, in the fashion industry. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I'd also add that, that the, the, one of the, the uh, things that also, the drivers that make this possible is, is the whole outsour outsourcing of, of production, right? Up till about the, the, the 1970s, let's say, most of the, the production is quite a regional affair. Uh, uh, Europeans wear things are made in Europe and in the United States, your shoes are made in New England and your, and your, and your clothes are made in upstate New York and, or, or in, 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 the, in the southern states. 
And all of a sudden, we have this, this unlimited supply of semi-skilled and unskilled labor that can take all that, that, that labor-intensive work that, that goes into the, the apparels that we, we, uh, we, we use uh, and, and make it ever cheaper and cheaper. So, so all of a sudden, as a percent of our disposable income, uh, 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 apparel purchasing uh, became a smaller and smaller, um, it became cheaper and cheaper and smaller and smaller part of the disposable income. So, so we, we exercised that, that uh, uh, discretion and started buying more and more clothes. Absolutely. So what would you say are the biggest targets and ways we can alleviate all these drivers or um, um, how to solve the crisis of this growing supply chain or this growing industry? Is that, um, you know, is it stopping this outsourcing situation? Is it um, um, focusing on less people, the, the accessibility makes it, you know, reducing this mass production? What are the major targets we can focus on first? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let me, well, we should put this in context. If, if, if the entire fashion industry tomorrow becomes a carbon neutral industry, it, it hasn't solved the, uh, our climate change problem, right? It contributes to it, but it is, it is not, uh, the, I, I think uh, um, the cows produce more methane and, and, and CO2 than our entire industry because yeah. they, they belch and fart apparently. Um, so, so, but we are significant. I mean, we, we, we are a, 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 it depends on whose numbers that you, that you read. We are a, a, uh, a double digit contributor to, to the um, uh, uh, carbon crisis and, and the climate crisis that we're in. Um, and we certainly produce a lot of waste and we use a lot of the energy and we produce a lot of wastewater yeah. and, and all those things. So, so what do we have to do? I, I think fundamentally how we got into pro, uh, trouble will probably be the way we get out of trouble. So, so first of all, um, a lot more education. Uh, the, the, um, and I would say at the consumer level and at the point of sale level that, that we give um, a lot more tools to, to consumers so that they can make better consumption decisions. Uh, by, uh, by T-shirt A or T-shirt B, what is the nutrition label of, of it? Or, you know, so that I can have more information about my, my consumption decision and what impact my consumption decision is making as I make these choices. Um, we should have, uh, we should look at, at, at the very high level at, at what are the, the, the governmental opportunities for, for changing le legislation and, and tax incentives so that we, we, we price things properly, we tax things properly, and we encourage uh, the, the development of, of, uh, of new business uh, so that we can drive uh, um, the, the, uh, the use of, of uh, recycled content in the clothes that we use. Uh, and, then, and then at the, at the uh, um, commerce level, we need to figure out how we can make, biz make money and how we can continue to grow Without creating a finance, uh, without creating an ecological crisis. Yeah. So this could be: Are there new service models? Are there new businesses? Are there are there new things that we can we can provide that is useful to consumers uh, w without without having to to create all the the problems that we are doing uh, with our current model? Absolutely, and I think we want to also focus about the, the option of recycling, textile recycling, and potentially, you know, investing and growing the idea of sustainable fabrics and materials. So this is kind of where we want to talk about, you know, what the HK retailers are doing. Um, so first of all, I think it's important to say what makes Hong Kong the ideal city for this, maybe this type of research and development, and why is actually a great place for this type of technology transfer? Right, 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 right. So, 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 Anything that we do at HK Rita and, and any success that we have, we've experienced isn't because we're smarter than anybody. I think it, it, a lot of it is because we're here in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is, is, is quite unique in, in, many, um, in many aspects for the fashion industry. One, we have a foundation in which we've got 70 plus years of involvement in the industry. I mean, we started at, in spinning and weaving and we went into manufacturing 
uh, supply chain um, um, management and 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 providing a lot of the work, uh, uh, the logistics uh, for for the industry. Uh, so Hong Kong um, has this backbone of 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 a, of a rich involvement with the industry, all aspects of the industry, and then we today sit in the middle of of most people's global supply chain. Mm -hmm. If you are in this industry, you you sort of somewhere along the way you touch Hong Kong. You're either doing your financing in Hong Kong, or you do it's your trading is in Hong Kong, or your manufacturer is listed in Hong Kong, or your brand is listed in Hong Kong, and and so. We have um, unique upstream and downstream visibility to what is going on, uh, and we also have a lot of great talent, human resource, and experience that that have seen it all before and know and have the the, the technical capabilities to say of oh, these are some solutions that you can you can bring to it. And so uh, I, I would say that we we are um, it, it, we're in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Um, and so textile recycling is a topic that, you know, it's growing, there's more growing attention yeah. on it. How feasible actually is it right now? Is it, uh, do we all have all the technology to solve this problem or actually it's still very much infancy uh, technology, yeah. it's still growing? It, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a great, it's, it's a great question. So, so first of all, um, a couple of definitions, right? So, so that we, we're clear, there is recycling at different levels, uh, different points in the supply chain. There is uh, industrial waste. So uh, anytime we turn a piece of cloth into a piece of garment, there, uh, there is probably about 10% 10, 10 uh, of, of that material that we actually don't use to end up on the cutting uh, floor. Um, so, so all that material, uh, it's great to recycle those. It happened to be, those happen to be basically brand new material that, that is in the it's all uniform in one color and one uh, one construction. We know everything about that material. Uh, so, so that um, we need to think about how 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 can we put that back into our manufacturing supply chain. Then you have uh, post consumer uh, recycling, which is what do we do with stuff that not when we're done using using that stuff. That is sort of the the uh, a more uh, difficult and more complicated uh, um, re recycling challenge because this is like trying to get toothpaste back into the tube, right? We we've it has it has gone from a a, um, a skew level, sort of what uh, many of the same things to one of many things. Right. So so the, the the two challenges there are the the logistics of getting it back into a place where you can process it. Uh, and the and, and the sortation of it. How do we how do we separate the the useful materials that we can reuse uh, right away? Uh, there are things that we we need to repair, and are there things that we need to transform because they are soil damaged or cannot be used as is? So all those are are, are opportunities. But let me hasten to 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 add that that type of of more visible uh, recycling opportunity and activity, uh, useful as, as it is, um, sort of hide some of the other opportunities that we should tackle that are that are that are easier and they're more cost effective. And and and, and the 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 big one there is is dead stock stuff that somebody made, shipped, and put in a store, and it turned out to be wrong color, wrong size, at the wrong price, and the wrong style, and they can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and the only exit for a lot of uh, brands is to discount their way out of trouble uh, and or others uh, for the luxury brands, they have to destroy it because they want to uh, preserve uh, the, the, the brand equity or, or the product scarcity. Uh, those are opportunities, which is these, how do we make fewer of these mistakes so that we don't have to fix the mistakes in the back end? So there... Uh, there's a there's a whole you know, all these tools with predictive analytics, uh, demand forecasting, and other tools that that are are available that that we can use to to not make those uh, problems in the first place. Absolutely. So take us through a little bit with um, HK Reader's role in the in re textile recycling industry. 
Ooh, that's the best way to put it. Um, maybe uh, I think one of the most notable example is the kind of the award-winning garment to garment or GTG recycling system, which is yeah. currently installed at the mills. Um, so yeah, take us through how, you know, uh, how was it yeah. developed, how it works, um, and actually how did that evolve into your collaboration with the H&M Foundation as well? Right, 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 right. So, so there, there, there are two pieces when we work on sustainability, we, we, we use uh, a, a sort of two directional lens as we look at that, that whole, uh, the opportunities there. One is what we call the less bad and one we call the more good. Right. So the, the less bad is, is, is uh, how, do we, how do we deal with the problems that, it, that we have created already in the marketplace? And under that is sustainability, uh, is recycling, because it's there. If we, if we don't do something with it, it'll get, it'll get landfilled, it'll get burnt, it'll, 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 it'll do something bad. So let's figure that. But there's a more good piece of our work, which is how do we improve design intent so that we don't create those problems. So, so better pro processing, better machinery, more intelligent manufacturing so that, uh, and better materials so that we don't, we don't continue to create those problems. Under the, 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 um, the things that we, we worked on in recycling, we started out, uh, this is sort of seven, eight years ago when we started down this, this, this road, we started out by looking at all the, the technologies that, that are possible. Uh, so, so mechanical recycling, very mature, uh, a lot going on, but mostly downcycling. Chemical recycling, everybody is, is uh, there's high hopes uh, pinned on chemical recycling uh, and, and uh, lots of opportunities there, but quite complicated, quite expensive, and, and, and a lot of, a lot of uh, new frontiers that we need to, to deal with. And then, and then biological recycling, can we use enzymes and fermentations and other, other biological methods to, to, to do the recycling? And we went, we, we experimented with, with all those and 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 the 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 garment to garment system is a is a completely different offshoot from this group of work that we were doing because most of everything we were doing were industrial solutions right I, either either but it, it happens in a factory and it happens at scale either it's post consumer post post industrial what have you uh, um, these are things that that are that we find quite exciting. But what we found as we went and talked to, to uh, stakeholders and, and just people that we work with is that there's a piece missing and which is that, that we, we are not talking with the users, the, the consumers of, of these products and, and they don't understand what we're talking about. Uh, and, and it's hard for them to visualize what is going on. So what we wanted to do was, what if we created something so that people can see the, the process? Yeah. And, and so, so uh, we created this, the garment-to-garment the garment system that, that, that is in the mills today is really an eight-step process. You, uh, we, we invite consumers to come in with their old clothes, clothes that they can't wear anymore, that they don't fit into anymore, and that they want to uh, do something with. And we take those and we break them down back into yarns and fibers. Uh, a lot of times if it's really worn, we, we blend some virgin material in uh, depending on the, uh, the, the tensile strength and uh, the, the state of the material that comes in. And then we, we use that to make uh, new, um, new fibers and yarns. And, and then we have a 3D knitting system to, to knit a new uh, garment out of the material that, mm -hmm. the, that the consumer uh, brought in. Uh, and and the, the idea there is to sell a service, right? And not to sell a product. Yeah. Uh, and to, and, and, but in the process, the consumer can actually walk with us through these various steps of transformation. We, we basically took a 40 foot container, put glass walls up and said, look, if you to walk counterclockwise around this box, you'll see uh, how it happens. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of that was, um, that was it. We, we wanted to create some sort of a, a consumer engagement. We want, to, we want to experiment with a new business model. And we want to see, you know, what can we learn from this? And so, um, and, and the mills, uh, the, the, uh, the, the retail part of the mills project was just uh, finishing up as it uh, was happening concurrently as we we're designing this. And they said, this is this thematically makes a lot of sense for us. So, 
why don't you put your first shop there with us? And so, so we, we put it there. So all the stars align for us. And, and sort of, if you, if you go and visit, visit the store, you, you'll see how it makes sense with it, with the context that, that, that it's in. And, and so um, we thought it was going to be a small experiment. It, it turned out to be quite a big one. It continues to draw a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, the H&M mm -hmm. group have asked us to build uh, a, a system for them in, in Stockholm. So you can see the system in, in, their, in their flagship store in, in Sweden. And we're, we are building various versions of this system uh, uh, with, with other people um, for, for other types of, of small scale application. Um, but, but, but one, it's, it's, it's a small system. It's a very customized system. It's not going to save the world. Yeah. Uh, and two, it, it's, it's different from most of the other recycling work that we do because it's a direct to consumer conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, Obviously, this is as a more of an educational tool uh, for consumers. But is there any way that you can scale up or potentially um, massively produce something similar to this uh, post-consumer product product for sure. everyone? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, for sure. The the parallel to this, we have other systems that we developed, and and the the this this new way of, of separating and recycling material uh, using what we call a hydrothermal process, which is just heat and pressure to separate material at scale uh, is, is one that we're currently most excited about because uh, the, the system that we de developed is very non-selective. It doesn't really care what the input is. It, it separates and, 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 and gives you the outputs uh, breaks them down and gives you give you output that you can use right away, and and why we're excited about it is that one it doesn't create any new chemical waste in the process. Two, it doesn't damage the fibers. Uh, what you put in is what you get out. So so it's a very very short uh, uh, recycling route. If you look at some of them, they, especially in the on the polyester side of things, there are these very very complicated energy and chemical and intensive processes to to break things down, depolymize them, turn them into pellets, and then, and then uh, spin yarns out. Those are, are great, but it's, uh, it's, it's fairly complicated and it's fairly expensive. We want to figure out, is there just something that, that, that works and works, uh, and it's an easy to build a business case around. So, so, so yes, there, there are, there are uh, solutions at scale. Uh, and, and certainly we, we want to contribute to all the, the marketplace of solutions that are out there. And, and so we hope that, that we, we could very fairly quickly scale uh, that system up as well. And does this include the green machine that you probably... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the green machine. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> we, we, are, we are, by the way, we, we are a... a the, uh, is a very small organization. There is a total of 80 of us. Uh, we do. We start about twenty new projects every year. We have we, at any one time we have fifty to sixty ongoing projects, and most of the guys here are engineers or scientists. None of us are fashionistas. <laughs> so, so uh, um, we are always surprised uh, when 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 some of these things have the market reaction that 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 it that it has. Uh, but, but for sure, what we want to do is to provide some of the, be very supportive and provide technology solutions so that somebody else can make beautiful, creative, uh, uh, sustainable output with them. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles in this uh, R&D process? Is it figuring out the right materials? Are there certain fabrics are much harder to recycle. Um, what are the hard things that are considerations when you're doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I don't think that, that you know, uh, we, we certainly do not believe that what we have in sustainability is a technology uh, a challenge. I think what we have is is a, is, a, is a business model challenge, is a, is a, um, it's a system challenge. Uh, and it's something that, that we, we, it re involves more fundamental changes that, that probably we, are, we, we all want to sign up for because there, there are some lifestyle implications for it. Um, in Hong Kong, our biggest challenges are this. One, uh, we work with a group of very responsible 
uh, um, uh, highly educated research scientists who want to make every single research project that we do succeed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I want everybody to do is to fail 80% of the time because I think we want to really, what will get people excited are always those cutting edge disruptive things. And we need to have enough of those uh, uh, all the time so that we can push the envelope. Because left to, left to our own devices, we'll always try to work on incremental improvements on existing s systems rather than uh, you, know, tr uh, you know, risk everything to, to try, try something completely disruptive. So that's one is, is a very responsible conservative attitude that our education system has drilled into to, to our, our, our team. And what we, what we spend a lot of time on is to tell everybody, you know, we expect to, to, to succeed, but it's okay to fail as long as we can, we learn something from it. Uh, and, and, and that we should, and, and that we, we don't need for everything to be neat and tidy. One of the things that we, we have, uh, uh, we have been trying very hard to disrupt is the whole research process. So, so uh, for the green machine, for sure, uh, and for the garment to garment system, we adopted what we call the, the, uh, uh, the, the software model, the, the 1.0 version model, which is that we know that when you buy version 1.0 of any software, there are bugs in it and it would be, and there are patches along the way. And so we don't have to wait for perfection before we start pushing these things out. We, we, what we need to do is to, is to very, very quickly push out solutions and do improvements and enhancements as part of the process of, of getting these things at scale in the marketplace. Because in, in, a, in a challenge like sustainability, we don't have time. Mm -hmm. Traditional research roadmap is you do lab scale work, you do bench scale work, you write papers, you, uh, you, you apply for more grants, and then you do a a pre-industrial scale trial, and then eventually you, 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 you do some sort of an industrial trial. And that's a 10-year a, a process. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. have 10 years, so we need to throw things out. And, and, and so, so what, what we, want, we tell our team is closure is overrated, and, and, and we don't have to re be that neat and tidy. The, the key is to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. So directionally, if we're if if we know where we want to be, uh, we and and we know we're getting closer and closer. It's okay that that now and then we have setbacks because as long as we we are making we're heading in the right direction, uh, that's the thing we we should aim for. So so these types of these types of attitude changes and 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 the, these appetites for risks. Are, are things that I, I think more than anything else, we, we spend a lot of time on we, and we try to fix. Um, uh, and and uh, it, it's fun, but it's, it's, it's hair raising uh, at the same time. I'm sure it is. Uh, so what, obviously the main part of the, your, uh, this process is selling these ideas to the marketplace, scaling them out. What are some of the best lessons that we've learned so far in approaching uh you know, companies yes. or kind of institutions and in selling, you know, what your technology or your research doing? You know, we, we used to ask ourselves that question about, about, I think, eight years ago. I remember sitting down with our, with our team and they were asking that, that question. We've since then sort of don't ask that question anymore. <laughs> so the, the key success to, to HK Reader is we cheat. Um, what we do is we start with the answers. What is the answer uh, that, that, that the marketplace want us to? To, to have for, for that challenge and, and that opportunity that they identify? And how do we ba work backwards to create a research project that helps them get there? Right. So, so we begin with, with the certainty that there is a market for that, right? So, so, so that we don't have to sell anything to anybody. This is something that, that is that the demand is there already. All we have to do is to create the supply for it. So we start, we, we start with that. Uh, and then what, what we want to suppress in, in us is, is, is to be very focused on that. Because I, I think 
otherwise, what we what we tell ourselves is that if if things don't get out of our labs, we satisfied our intellectual curiosity, but we have not made the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And and our our goal is to kick things out of our labs as quickly as possible. So so scaling up, industrializing them, working hard on 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 very practical solutions are 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 quite important. Now, that's a hard sell because. Um, most of our researchers are, are PhDs, uh, you know, are postdocs and all that. And, and the process of getting a PhD is that you become a better and better expert in a smaller and smaller minutia of, 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 of knowledge, right? You, you, you've honed in, you're the world's expert on this sliver of, of, uh, of, of technology or, or knowledge. And, and so how we address that is we build um, cross-functional uh, uh, teams within our, our research teams, because our belief is that real world problems are multidiscipline problems. You, 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 you have to solve the engineering problem. You have to, you have to solve the, you have to make it financially feasible. So, so what's the business case behind it? Uh, there are logistics issues. How do we communicate this in an effective way so that people know what we're doing? Uh, and, and how do we how do we build a, a improvement plan or enhancement plan so that as we throw things out in the marketplace, we're already working on 2.0 of, of the solution that, that we have we have developed, and and it's 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 uh, it's 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 different from from what how a lot of uh, uh, researchers work. They are secretive and they work in specialities. We 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 you know we don't publish. We, we satisfy the government by, by every now and then registering an IP or, or thereabouts, but we really uh, are, are really spending our time. Our, our internal KPIs are usefulness and adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, and usefulness is, is usually for, for the sustainability projects. It's what's the LCA tell us uh, uh, that, that the, the impact of this is uh, versus what is happening in the marketplace. And adoption is how many people actually think this is a good idea uh, in the marketplace, because I think that's a good gauge of, of how are we actually uh, providing use, anything useful. Mm -hmm. And it, obviously all these solutions and research is towards, you know, how can we make the planet a better place? How can we reduce the environmental impact? So do you be, are you more open to sharing technology? Are you more in, uh, open no. to sharing that kind of information? Yeah. 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 Uh, almost, almost, uh, 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 almost to a fault. I'll, I'll give you an example of what we're working on right now. We, we are in the middle of what we call the open lab project. Okay. So, so because we've completed a whole bunch of projects, uh, so in, in, in sustainability, about 60, 70 of our 200 some uh, completed projects are in that, on those domains. They're hard to find and we don't, we don't do a very good job telling people what we have, what we have done. And, and, and we, we, all of these are pieces of a puzzle. So what we've done, what we're doing right now is we're putting all of this into a database. Uh, and, and, and so digitally, um, you can begin to do useful, meaningful search uh, about what we've done, how we did it. And, and then well, on top of that, we're building a lab, a, a physical lab. Uh, and, and, and so, and we're housing all the equipment, all the material, uh, everything that we did in these projects and we're putting it physically in, in, in that lab. And next to the lab, we're, we're actually going to open up a, a small recycling factory. And, and we're actually gonna do, uh, try some new technologies and, 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 and experiment with how we can make improvements mm -hmm. in that lab. And, and what we've told people is that we call it the open lab. If you want to find an answer to, to, to something that you're struggling with, Come on down. If you if you want to send uh, some of your researchers or, or whomever on your team to do a residency or spend a couple of months with us, or you just come with a problem and 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 say uh, and work with us across the table, we're happy to you know we'll we'll host you. And if you if 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 and what we'll probably usually do our preferred way of operating is that let's pull in a couple of your of your supply chain partners. Who's your manufacturer? Who's your who's your raw material supplier? Who's your logistics guy? Let's work on this together, so that at the end of the day, one we have better visibility to uh, to 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 this problem because everybody has some slightly different perspective sure. of what that solution sure. looked like. So let's incorporate all of that 
in real time. Uh, so that, and, and then it doesn't become something that's in, not invented here, right? Everybody has skin in the game. So, so everybody owns it and everybody uh, um, knows everything about it so that as soon as we're able, able to push it on the marketplace, it's ready for use uh, because it, that's how it, it, was, it was put together in the first place. So, so we want to do all that in, in, this, in, this, in this lab uh, and, and we, we, the construction is a little bit delayed, but we, we hope that, that sometime towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, this, will, this physical space will exist in Hong Kong uh, and, alongside with this small factory that, that, that we are, that we are uh, a recycling factory that we want to make yarns and, 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 and other useful products. We'll, we'll start with making yarns, but we'll, we'll try to get to fiber. And if we can get to fiber, we'll probably try to get to garment in, in this one location. And, and it's great, you know, we have, we have about a dozen brands sponsoring, uh, we'll say they, they, will, they want to use the space already and a, and a dozen manufacturers uh, that said they're, they're, they're there. We said, great, now we have manufacturers, we've got brands, we've got everybody else. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know we're, we're just providing the liquor, everybody else is coming to the party. <laughs> um, but, but, then the, but then this factory is, is really interesting for us. Currently, the people who are collaborating with us are all the usual suspects, you know, manufacturers and brands, mm -hmm. but also uh, the Hong Kong Shanghai Hotel Group uh, said, we want in at the Peninsula Hotel. I said, why do you want this? Says, hey, we have sheets and towels, right? Yeah. So, so okay. there's, there's people like that. There's a real estate company that, that wants in. Um, there, there are, there are, uh, uh, there, 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 People like in the Swire group, like Cathay Pacific, and people say, "Hey, you want to process uniforms?" I say, "Sure, bring." Them. So, so I, I think it it is not only post consumer. Uh, it, it could also be these types of uh, unique applications in 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 the service economy, like Hong Kong, that we can incorporate and provide solutions for everybody to to uh, to participate in. Absolutely, that's um, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind it, of. It, yeah, please. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a real-time experiment. I, I think the, the proviso we told people is that you know this is a real-time experiment. And it's not like you're coming here and we are solution providers. No, we, we're, we're working on this together. So, so uh, I, I think if we, if we approach it that way, I, I think uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there faster. Sure, and that's actually leads into my question quite nicely, which is um, what kind of advice do you give kind of aspiring startups or creators? Because um, obviously I'm sure there's a lot more people who have different ideas, who just don't have the kind of platforms right. or ways to tools to do so. Um, so how would you suggest, you know, people partner up with you or re approach you? Yeah. What kind of advice do you give to people looking to create their own uh, research and development product? Yeah, yeah, great question, and you actually uh, uh, have provided some of the answers already. I think I think the the the, the two things that we found that have worked for us uh, very well uh, in, in in our journey. One is partnership, and the other is resilience. Partnership is just to acknowledge that the the, the problems that we get to to work on, and actually the the problems that are meaningful and useful, uh, um, are usually complicated. So so they need multidiscipline uh, contributors. So, so we need to be part of a team. We, it, the, the key is how, how, what is the quality of the, of the team that you can put together? How fast can you have, have talented people who aspire to do the same things uh, that you want to do in the same place uh, and, 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 and moving uh, at, at the same rate? So, so great partnerships, I, I think, is important. Uh, the the era of of the Lone Ranger, I think, is, is long over, and, and and we'll get there faster if we if we if we. It's the company that we keep that that is important one, right? And, and the other one is resilience, mm -hmm. which is that how fast can you recover from from failure or or, or roadblocks because. It's, it's hard, it's difficult, it's complicated, and there are unforeseen circumstances. But what we have to do is to be able to very quickly recover from that, learn from it, figure out what type of course corrections we need to do on the fly, and continue moving. So, so I mean, a lot of challenges that, that, that I, I think probably in Hong Kong, there are a lot of great ideas that people give up on too early because 
you know somebody gave them some negative feedback or sure. it didn't sure. it didn't grow as fast as they thought it would I, I i think that that's i think we just need to to be able to to dust ourselves off get up and 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 get at it again uh um and and and, and so i think we'll just get there fast uh uh we just have to be a, a little bit um, more uh, robust and 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 uh, ten, tenacious than the next guy to be successful. Yeah, that's some great insight over there. Um, so I'm going to go into a couple of social media questions that we got. Um, so if anyone okay. in the audience as well wants to have a question, you can pop in into the chat box as well. Um, so we have one question about um, what are the key features in developing research into technology in sustainable fashion, and what are what do people often get wrong about it? Ah, okay. That's a really broad question. Well, <laughs> well, uh, some of the things we've talked about already, uh, sometimes we need to, to get beyond the, the, um, the popular culture uh, and, and really uh, understand and, and, and look at the, the, uh, the, the problem so that we have a, a better understanding of where the op big opportunities are. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, this thing that we talked about earlier, dead stock, uh, buyers making making mistakes, uh, that's a great opportunity. I mean, you, you can solve that with with, with technology uh, by by buying smarter. You can solve that by making your supply chain more agile by moving faster uh, through your supply chain, and, and you can solve that by by more clever uh, distribution uh, warehousing uh, solutions. So, so look beyond some of the the uh, the, the popular uh, uh, um, dialogue about these things, and, and, and get a deep understanding uh, about that. I think I think would be good. And, and the other thing is, I, I think the opportunity in, when we tackle an area like sustainability is is oftentimes our, our ability to to look at the challenge in multiple horizons. So, are there are there quick fixes that that will have have quick wins that we can engage in that 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 we can present as as saying these are three month six month solutions uh, that that we can keep the light on lights on and, and pay rent and, and what have you uh, that 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 uh, there's a market for are there medium term solutions that that really uh, um, uh, do a lot more uh, you know, and, and, and in optimization and, and what have you, and then are there long-term, very disruptive uh, changes that we can we can envision uh, that will actually change the game? Uh, we every we don't get to play in the in the long-term disruptive stuff unless we can prove ourselves in the in the quick win area, right? Nobody is going to believe you. You know, give me money, and in four years I'll give you something. No, you have to you have to keep. Uh, um, producing uh, before you 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 get a chance to do that. So so can we juggle all those things at the same time? Can we build a, a, a team that is talented that, that is robust? Uh, I think all those are are opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked a lot about you know business models and uh, manufacturing uh, pressures and all that. Um, so we never really talked about the individual uh, side of action. Um, so someone asked, is there, what are ways consumers can be more aware of um, their purchases? Is it uh, avoiding fast fashion or is it being more aware of greenwashing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consumers for sure have a, have a role. So, so, so some of the things, again, we've, we've touched on, right. Uh, I, I think they should demand more point of sale information like what what am i buying where did it come from what is the impact of, of this so that i can make a better informed decision of, about my purchasing what are some unsustainable practices today as a consumer that i need to to adjust uh which is that that uh you know we look at today contemporary a lot of us look at clothes as disposable consumables mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you know a generation ago, our parents and their parents look at clothes as durables. That's why they repair things. And that's why, you know, they, they, these are heirlooms, right, that they hand off to the next generation. So, so that's why they demand a certain level of quality. Uh, and that's why they demand a level of durability in the materials that they use. I think we need to, to, to get back to that, uh, uh, that mental attitude about, about what we own, what we possess, and then are there some new 
paradigms when, when it comes to the clothes that we use. So, so leasing models, subscription models, wardrobe in the cloud uh, type of ideas are those ownership types of, 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 uh, uh, of, of mentality uh, opportunities for us to, to, to shift uh, as well. Um, so yeah, there, there's a, there's a there's a lot that 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 consumers certainly can can work on, uh, and, and then and then we have a lot more capability to express our opinions, especially in, through e-commerce. We 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 rate these things. We go. We have we every one of us have a stage to talk about our experience with those things. And I I think we effective communication and, and, and self-disclosure about what we think of, of uh, the things that we use is also important. Mm -hmm. uh, someone here just asked, uh, retailers and brands will respond and follow consumer pressure to offer more sustainable fashion. So in your experience, uh, how do you weed out greenwashing? Um, uh, well, we, we, we certainly have, I, I go back again to to uh, consumer level point of sale information, yeah. I think I think that yeah. that is that is important. That we need to be we need to demand more transparency, uh, so that so that we uh, so that we understand and know what what we're purchasing. Uh, I absolutely think that 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 brands uh, uh, respond to consumer uh, consumer demands for for uh, for information like that. I also think that that. That what we that the message for brands in in the current marketplace that we're in right now is that there is this marketplace is becoming a binary. There are winners and losers. Winners are are, are the good guys, and 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 they will grow at the expense of all these other people because the 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 total marketplace isn't going to grow. Certainly not in the near term, right? The 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 EU and the US is, is uh, you know, people are not spending that much more money on, on, on discretionary purchases like, like garments. So you, you, it's, it's becoming more and more of a zero sum game. So the urgency for, for brands is to, is to say, you either are gonna win big or you're gonna lose big. And, and how do you get yourself into, into the right, uh, into that right group? Um, and, and make sure that you communicate that effectively to, to customers, because I think customers are looking for that utility. Yeah. The, the last thing yeah. you want is for your customer to feel bad every time they buy something from you or feel guilty uh, that every time they buy something for you. So how are you going to make, make them feel good that they shopped with you? And I think these are fairly practical uh, commercial financial de decisions that also uh, uh, have sustainable impact. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I, yeah, for sure, for, for sure, we have to move sustainability out of the CSR department, and and, and it, it's got to be something that CFOs take care of. Mm -hmm. And we don't do these things out of the goodness of our heart. If we do these things because there is a practical business uh, a model behind it, and it and it's a commercial decision, and and I think we just need to move that conversation in that direction. I actually asked this question to a lot of our past uh, speakers as well. So it'll be interesting to kind of see your point of view. Um, so do you think COVID-19 has kind of forced people to reconsider the values and the importance of their, you know, and their lifestyle habits? Or do you actually think is the other way around? It's made yeah. things worse. I, I, I think this is what, 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 what is happening. So, so the, on, on, a, on a macro level, there are some certain changes or e-commerce spiked uh, and, and, uh, and what have you, and, and people didn't shop in shopping malls anymore. Now, whether that will, will, will be sustainable or is that change temporary or permanent, we don't know. But certainly some shifts will happen. But once you understand the convenience of, of, of uh, buying from your couch, maybe you don't want to go back to, to, uh, to the mall and, and get stuck in traffic anymore. But I think more, uh, so, so that's on a, on a, on a, on a business level. On, on, a, on an individual level, I, I think there is, a, there is certainly in, in, our, in our research, there is this shift in, in consumer um, utility, uh, although the, what the consumer expects the utility is from their purchasing, uh, from their apparel. Bef pre COVID, the question that the consumers ask is, does this make me look good? So it's all about aesthetics and being on trend, right? In the middle of the, of, of the pandemic and, and now as we come out of the pandemic, then there are two more questions, which is, uh, does this make me feel good? 
which is uh, that that question we asked about. So, so you know, do I feel guilty? Do I do I feel like I'm, I'm I'm doing something that is socially not acceptable or environmentally not acceptable? Because I think if if nothing else, the the, the pandemic has taught us that planetary health and personal health is is an extension of the same thing. So so they've made that connection. So so feeling good is is is. Im- is important, and then I thirdly, and this may go away as, as the pandemic goes away. Is the question is, does this make me feel safe? Yeah. So, so which is that uh, you know they will be more attractive to things that have more functionality. Oh, this is antibacterial. Oh, this is uh, something I can use when I exercise because it has moisture management. Um, this has some some. Uh, this protects me more. Um, so so. There, there are these emerging uh, um, utility that consumers are asking. I mean, because don't forget, this is still the, the biggest, heaviest, and, and, and dumbest uh, uh, system that we carry around on us uh, every day. I mean, this is the only system that we use that is single purpose. And this is the only system that we take care of. Everything else, our, our phone protects us, informs us, uh, uh, keeps us connected. And so it, it, has, it has multi-application. This stuff, if it gets dirty, we have to take care of it. Yeah. We have to change clothes when it's hot and cold. So, so this isn't going to, so the, the expectation and the demand for, for these types of apparel systems and solutions, I think will, will change um, coming out of this pandemic. Um, and since we're kind of approaching to the one hour, uh, so yeah, I want to yeah, kind of exactly. pose, you, pose this one final question to you. Um, so how optimistic and how hopeful are you about the future of the fashion and textile industry and just in how we reduce our environmental impact with climate change? Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very, very optimistic. <laughs> I, 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 mankind has, has, has so far... Uh, been able to solve every crisis, every problem that has been thrown against us. I don't think we will be extinct because of our fashion choices. You know, uh, I, I, I think uh, I'm sure we we can we can we can uh, make uh, sufficient, rapid, uh, uh, at scale improvements uh, so that we can we can get over this. The challenge is for us is that how fast we can do this. Uh, and and how much resources do we do we do we throw at it? Um, because the the longer this drags out, the the more it's going to cost, and and the more environmental damage that that we do. And and so uh, uh, if we can push this along faster, I, I think it, it will be it will be great. But I'm I'm very very optimistic that that will will be fine. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, So with that, uh, that brings an end to the evening. So thank you everyone who joined us tonight and a very big special thank you for Edwin. Uh, You've been very helpful, very informative and insightful. Uh, So everyone make sure to follow HK Rita for their latest and future projects, any ongoing collaboration. I'm sure there's a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, And with that, uh, great speaking to you and absolutely pleasure having you on, Edwin. Thank you, hope this was useful. Yeah, thank you and stay safe everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.